Hey, hey, how's it going? Hey, happy, happy Saturday. How's everyone doing? Lots of activity, lots of activity before I start. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll, I'll get into the activity here in a second, but yeah, thank you. How's it going? Happy Saturday. How's everyone doing? <laughs> How's the weather in your neck of the woods? I, I uh, usually start with the weather, so I'll start with that. So I'm in Minnesota, Midwest. Most Midwest is, has like the most perfect fall weather that's continuing on into November. So at least for us in the Midwest, it's 60, 65, sunny and dry. It's like it's like the perfect fall day. So it's it's really late in fall around here, especially up here, North Minnesota. Uh, but it is it is fantastic. I, I uh, right before. Not right before, but just a little while ago, I was, I was sitting around and I was doing a whole bunch of social stuff and just trying to get caught up and trying to manage comments and stuff as they were coming in from my video this morning. And I was like, I'm just going to go for a walk. And so I just walked about two miles that way and two miles back. And it's it's so nice out. So hope you guys are doing well. Um, hope you guys uh, are are getting to enjoy uh, some of the outdoors and if not getting to enjoy some of the indoors because there's just as much to enjoy <laughs> indoors as there is outdoors. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Uh, Amaze Josh, how's it going? Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll get into all that. Uh, Amaze Josh, haven't seen that name in a while. Uh, I'll get into to, uh, subs and stuff here in a second. Um, but yeah, so, so, um, as I was saying, like, uh, there's, there's lots to do indoors. As you can tell, um, my latest video, that's something that I've been working on, on the court over the course of like two weeks, took a while to, to figure out to do, uh, one, I had a requirement of like finish that room. And then I got to a point where I'm like, this could go on forever. Like finishing this room. I mean, it's never done. It could go on forever. So I, I just kind of said, you know what? It's, it's, it's good enough for <laughs> my video, which, you know, arguably in any of my videos are, I, I you know, I, I, I wing a lot of stuff. Um, and I try not to put too much thought, uh, but I was, I've been overthinking this one for like a month because I was like, I want it to be great. It's got to be better than the last time. And uh, I just need to stop overthinking stuff. So anyways, um, yeah, I, 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 that's what I've been working on is is just uh, one, not only getting that room ready, uh, two, uh, getting uh, ready for filming, but two, getting that room uh, pretty solid as far as cord, cable management, where things go. Uh, I still have a ton of space on the other side. I didn't show really any of the other side besides the shelf. I have some plants from over there, but I kind of had to put it on the back burner to actually film the video uh, to then edit the video to then release it. But anyways, um, and then on top of all that, I've been, you know, I, I, I've been spinning up new services and all the other stuff you've been seeing over the last couple of weeks. I've been adding those on while I've been doing all of this. So a couple things going on, but uh, which is a good segue into like, what do you guys have going on? What can I help with? If anything, what are you guys working on this weekend? What are you guys working over on over the next couple of weeks? Any big projects, any big purchases coming up? Let me know. Let me know. Just throw it in chat. That'd be, uh, that'd be fantastic. Um, because I'm curious to know. And then if you have questions about anything that I did recently, I, I know I talked about virtualizing Windows 11, uh, Nut Server, Uptime Kuma, all that stuff. Like if you guys have questions that are out there, uh, there's always the the Rancher and K3S and Kubernetes questions that people have, throw it in there too. I, I'm, I'm happy to answer them and maybe we'll figure it out together. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, lots of lots of activity. Uh, it looks like hype trains going on. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'm going to scroll back a little bit in the timeline uh, just to make sure that uh, I cover everyone uh, that happened uh, that did some activity here in the next in the last couple of well, right before I get started. So I'm going to start here. Uh, DC Seattle, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, B Pearson, thanks for the follow. Fusey, Fusey, I'm going with Fusey. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, Swedish Hermit. Raul, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Pros TV, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Wibbling, thanks for the sub. Prime sub, thank you so much. Thanks for spending your prime sub on me, really appreciate it. Uh, burgers and bread, thank you. Huh, this is burgers and bread, <laughs> thanks for the follow, appreciate it. PC Geek, 14 months, let's go, man. How's it going, dude? Uh, 14 months, man, over a year, year and two months. Thanks so much, dude, appreciate it. Um, Thanks for thanks for uh, Prime sub, appreciate it. Or Tier 1 sub, I apologize. Uh, thanks for it, and thanks for all you do in our Discord community, too. Uh, Genie, yeah, I'm going with Genie. Lots of Gs, lots of Ys. Uh, no, G-G-G-N-Y. I'm going to go with that. Thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Uh, welcome. Torquemada, resub, Prime, five months. How's it going, Torquemada? How are you? 
Uh, Amaze Josh, how's it going, man? Tier one, 10 months, three months straight. Dude, how are you, Amaze Josh? I, <laughs> every time I see your name, I, I, I smile. Not that I don't know other people, but Amaze Josh, I, I, we go way back to the beginning of Twitch for the both of us, I think. Uh, he and I uh, were, <laughs> we were probably the only other viewer sometimes. So I know I, for sure in my channel, sometimes he was the only person in my channel. So appreciate it, man. How are you doing? How, how are things going? How's your fiance doing? Hopefully things are going well. And then Frostix. Frostix, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. So, so how's everyone doing? Uh, just a couple of, couple of things. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, welcome. Thanks for getting here. Thanks for getting here all the way from YouTube because I guarantee you didn't discover me on Twitch. You probably discovered me on YouTube and you made it all the way over here from Twitch so I, I, or from YouTube. So I, I really appreciate it. Uh, I, if you're new too, I usually keep things roughly an hour. Uh, don't try to stay on here too long and, and don't need to try to make it any longer than it needs to be. Just a time to, for all of us to get together, talk about things, uh, figure things out. And if we don't figure them out here, we'll figure them out later, either in Discord or somewhere else. But just giving everyone a chance to get together and chat. Um, so uh, speaking of chat, let's let's uh, let's see. There's it's already flying in, so thank you so much. Uh, let's 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 talk. Let's see what's going on. First of all, thanks for the hype train. This is this is awesome. I see this quite often, so I appreciate it. Um, I can't see under the hype train, uh, but I assume this was just the follows from Burgers and Bread. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the fall. Oh, Tara, Tara Motu, Tara Motu. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome, Manny. So the first person in here, besides uh, Burgers and Bread, that was a follow. But the first person to actually chat in chat. Manny01. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, Manny? Uh, Alec, Alec, Sin, Alec, oh, here we go again. Alec, Alec English91. Good afternoon. <laughs> how's it going? I know I struggled on this the last time I saw you. I think it was two weeks ago. Uh, it might have been three weeks ago when I saw your name in chat. And I was like, Alec, Alec Ing. How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, if you see this banana command ever from me, it means me testing my bot to make sure that my bot is working. So this is a code that I run, uh, a code that I wrote and code that runs in my home lab uh, that's in my channel. So a whole bunch of mediocre things going on in there. Mediocre code, mediocre home lab, running in K3S and Rancher and Kubernetes and <laughs> may or may not work. Uh, your mileage may vary, uh, but usually that's me testing it. So uh, Frostix, Frostix, well, I'm going with Frosty, Frosty SX. Hell yes, Tim is on the house, is on the house, is on the house. All right, I'm on the house. How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, Manny01, uh, it's that time of week. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you so much. ISO, how's it going? Good evening. Good morning. How's it going? Yeah, that's that's true. For a lot of people, it's it's uh, uh, for a lot of people, it's 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 roughly afternoon, but for some people, it's evening too. If, uh, if you're out uh, further east, so how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bits of sin. Uh, how, hope everyone's having a good afternoon. Good evening. I am for sure. For sure. Uh, uh, tooth. Oh man, oh, it's a tough one. Tooth is, been, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna go with tooth. Midnight for me, so yeah, shrug. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly what I'm saying. The further east you get from the United States, the, the later it is, <laughs> or the earlier it is than the next day, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> uh, Wise TV, I just spun up Jellyfin on my gaming machine, got K3S running on my Pi cluster, and trying to figure out what to do next. Ooh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I, I'd, uh, yeah, that sounds interesting. Uh, I got a whole bunch of stuff you can try next for sure, <laughs> for sure. Dude, Frosty, thanks for the sub, Prime sub. Thank you so much. Thanks for spending your Prime sub on me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, but Wise TV, um, man, lots of stuff you can do. I know that media centers are, are just media um, streaming and consumption uh, in the home is 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 definitely the gateway <laughs> into home labbing or or having even uh, 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 servers in your house. I, that's a huge, huge way that people get into this whole entire ecosystem. Figuring out what next is, is really up to you. I have a ton of self-hosted stuff. I self-host a ton of stuff, some publicly, some only internally. And really, I, I mean, it's up to you. Um, good ones are, um, for me personally, good ones uh, that I usually go to. Uh, I mean, pie hole for DNS, not only for ad blocking, but for local DNS. That's a big one for me. Um, K3S is another one. True NAS, if you need a dedicated NAS, which if you're running Jellyfin, you probably have a NAS already, arguably. Um, and then it's it's anywhere. It's anything from Sync Thing, Uptime Kuma, um, the things I wrote myself. Uh, a lot of self-hosting for me. So the world is your oyster. <laughs> um, let's see, PC Geek. Yeah, 14 months. Let's go. How's it going, man? Yeah. Uh, Wise TV. Part of me wants to put Jellyfin on the pies, but not sure how uh, it'll run. 
Yeah, good question. Um, so not super familiar with Jellyfin. Like, I get it. I know what it does. Um, and I've done some other things similar to it, I think, before Jellyfin got forked. Uh, similar, you know, obviously to Plex. Um, just uh, a general rule of thumb w with even, uh, I'll just speak generally about, about media servers on Pies. They'll do okay unless they need to transcode. If they transcode, they're, I'm just not even going to sugarcoat it. It'll do very bad. <laughs> not going to sugarcoat it. They'll do bad. Uh, but, but luckily, uh, a, lot of, a lot of devices, you can direct stream H.264 uh, media to it. Um, so if it's encoded properly and the target device you're going to stream to supports the codec, uh, that you're streaming at most of the time, it's it's totally fine. It's it's not going to use really any uh, roughly uh, little CPU, no CPU on, on encoding or decoding. Uh, it's just going to send the media directly to it. So it just depends. If you're thinking of streaming just in home only, and all of your devices support the target uh, codec, you should be pretty good. Should be pretty good. But if they don't, say for instance. You're going to want to watch it on an older tablet. That tablet doesn't support deck direct stream. I'm talking about Plex, but the same idea. Uh, and then, then it's going to be up to your media server to encode uh, that, that video stream into a codec that your target device can understand uh, or consume. And that's where, that's where Pi's kind of, kind of struggle a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, if you're not doing that, most modern things you have in your home support direct stream. So if you're thinking like Xbox, PlayStation, mobile devices, web browsers, um, uh, other PCs, uh, obviously in a web browser, Xboxes, you name it, uh, most of them can play them just fine without without having to transcode. So it might be good, your mileage may vary. It's worth a, it's worth a shot, it's worth a shot for sure. Because uh, if it's now on your gaming PC, I mean that gaming PC has to stay on every time you wanna stream some media, uh, that's, that. That's a lot of power. I mean, just saying the name gaming PC, I can already say that's going to draw a lot of power. Obviously, a lot more than a pie. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, great question, great question. Um, let's see. Uh, Id, 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 yay! Just watched your latest uh, server room video tour. Finally catching the live. Thank you, and thank you, and welcome. First time chat. Thank you so much. Thanks for speaking up. Uh, hope you liked it. Um, <laughs> like I said, this has been a long time in the making. I did a lot of things different. Some things turned out okay, some didn't. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very critical of the stuff that I do. And, uh, and anyways, I don't want to go too deep into it. But to be honest, I filmed almost that whole entire thing with my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Almost the whole entire for thing. Except for the first 30 seconds, I used my, my camera right here. Everything else you saw was filmed with my iPhone, which if I would have adjusted the settings a little bit better, it would have turned out better. But anyways, long story short, uh, I'm, I'm super critical because like I, I didn't have the settings right on my phone and there was no turning back. I didn't like double record and I'm like, I'm not going to re-record this whole entire hour and a half session of me walking through my home lab because the color and the, you know, uh, whatever. The <laughs> exposure was off, but kind of kicked myself uh, that I didn't put my phone in manual mode and I let iPhone like determine all the settings for me, which generally speaking, if you have a lot of light, it's good. But in low light mode, it, it overcompensates for a lot, a lot of stuff. So anyways. Um, hey, dude, thank you so much. Wise TV gifted five subs. Dude, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I got to turn my alerts up a little bit more so I know that they happen. This happened to me last week where I was just like not calling out follows and, and subs and stuff because I couldn't hear the alert in my ear. I think I have it turned up. Yeah, there it goes. I can kind of hear it now. Dude, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Wise TV. So Wise TV uh, gifted five sub. ISO, enjoy your gifted sub. Do as bards do. Uh, John, Do John Do Norris, uh, Manny01, and John... John, Johnny, Johnny Fives, uh, Johnny Fives. Enjoy your gifted stuff from Wise TV, dude. Wisey TV, thank you so much. Um, and while I'm at it, uh, Voldemort, 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 <laughs> I can't say it. Voldemort Mitori. Hey, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Phillips01 and Tim C19, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, and thanks again for the subs, appreciate it. Um. But let's see. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm super critical of my own work, but I appreciate it. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm like turning a compliment into critiquing my own stuff. So I thank you. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Um, Alec, Alec, uh, thanks for the last uh, chat. Two weeks ago, I took your gentle recommendation to consider a different approach uh, to build base uh, for the static part of my website using Hugo. All right. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, I, I, I use both Hugo and Jekyll <laughs> and uh, WordPress and you name it. <laughs> but I, I know uh, I know Hugo really well. Um, 
I used to, I, so I started out in Jekyll. I did some stuff in Jekyll before. So if you're not familiar with Jekyll and Hugo, what they are is static site generators. So basically you can feed them uh, Markdown uh, and write in Markdown and it will generate Markup for you. So it'll generate static pages of all of your content for you uh, in HTML. Uh, the benefit there is, uh, one, um, you don't need a full entire CMS. So CMS is a content management system. If you think of something like WordPress, full-blown CMS, right? You can, you can log in, you have an administrative side, you have a database in the back end. Uh, it's running PHP and served out through Apache. And you create content, you can upload content, and it generates all of that content for you dynamically, uh, which, which is good. It's a good thing uh, sometimes. Um, and, and so when people hit your website, it's making database calls. If it's not cached to get that data out of the database to show you, uh, and render HTML for you. Well, static site generators like Hugo and Jekyll, um, actually generate that content ahead of time. Uh, so that when people access it, all your web server needs to do is send them a static page, no database calls, no service calls, no churn, no nothing. Uh, and it's really nice, uh, for performance. And it's really nice for security too. It's super nice for security because now you don't have a database. Now you don't have a backend that you can log into. You don't have all of these vulnerabilities that could creep up in, in say WordPress or MySQL or anything like that. Not, not targeting them now, but any system uh, that relies on a series of systems, uh, any one vulnerability could expose the whole entire thing. Or, you know, it's, it's, it's basically the weakest link. Uh, could it, could, could have um, some undesired effects. But with static site generators, it's awesome because it's like, well, you know, all, all, the only thing you're exposing, probably, maybe, maybe not even this, is a, a, a web server like Nginx or Apache or something like that. And then you could even, you could even go one step further if you really wanna go crazy. <laughs> you could even use a CDN with all of that static content and publish it all to a CDN and then you're, you totally wipe your hands of it, let, let a CDN serve it out for you, and then it's super lightning fast and locally available to people. Anyways, I, I'm super excited about static site generators. I've, I've done it for a while. Uh, Hugo is, is definitely one of my favorites. Jekyll's another one. If you've ever looked at my documentation on GitHub um, that I have hosted, 100% Jekyll, I write all of that in Markdown. So it's really cool. It's really cool. So I, I write the content. I manage all the content as code. I push it up. I have a CI process that uses Jekyll that generates static pages and publishes it to github.io. So it's super cool. And then I have some things self-hosted here that I do through Hugo. Same idea. I write Markdown. I push it up. My CI in, my, in, in, in GitLab, which my runners are running here in my, in my home lab, build it push it up, push it in my Kubernetes and it's available. So super, super fun stuff. I, I love it. <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited about static site generators? It's more just about uh, how, how, how awesome you can, or how quickly you can get uh, uh, typically hard things done really fast and make them look really good. Hey, uh, WHG5, thanks for the sub. Tier one, thank you so much. Appreciate it. How's it going? Thank you, thank you. Um, let's see, uh, so Ella, glad you liked it. Uh, I'm glad I steered you in the right direction. Uh, Hugo and Jekyll are, are super fun. Uh, you might outgrow them at some point, but for most, most, uh, easier sites, I, I don't want to say easy, but like non e-commerce type sites, like static site generators are, are fantastic for that. Uh, let's see. PC geek was trying to use my edge router as a VPN client for remote access to my home network, but it's always DNS. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you, man. Yeah. I hear you. Uh, it would, uh, IP would work. Just no DNS. Yeah. I, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there many times in my life switching between DNS, our, our VPN services, VPNing in from home. And yeah, I've been there. I've been there plenty of times and it stinks. It stinks. This last trip that I went on, uh, I was actually able to VPN in. I tested it way ahead of time. I was like, okay, get my, get my MacBook, connect to, you know, uh, tether to my phone, VPN into home. Okay. I can, uh, but I've been there. I've been there so many times. Um, and sometimes, uh, yeah, I shouldn't say it, but sometimes you can, I don't want to say leave a back door open, but another remote client that can get into another machine. So then you can have like a launch pad internally. I don't know. Not that I do that, but I've done that before. You know, you set up a team, team viewer or something else. So you can remote into one machine and then you can just launch pad from there anywhere else in your network. Uh, and, and some people leave that open for, for just in case VPN doesn't work or goes down. Uh, I don't anymore because mine's pretty stable, but I used to do that. I used to do that <laughs> even before I had VPN. That's how I did it. I had a virtual machine uh, that was running like TeamViewer 
and I would uh, remote into that machine, and then from there, I can get anywhere I needed to. But yeah, oh man, that stinks, man. Uh, Tormagana, thank you, thank you. Uh, tooth, Tooth, I've randomly stumbled on one of your videos some time ago when I was fighting out what to do with a couple of pies I had catching the line for the first time. Thank you, thank you. Tooth, I, I want to say the whole thing, but uh, there's a lot of uh, syllables in there uh, <laughs> and consonants in there that I don't really know how to say together, so I'm just going to say Tooth. Tooth, tooth is, tooth is phantom. That's kind of what it looks like, but I'll go with that. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Pizza Geek Chili. I'm on vacation a little north from home. Hell yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're north of where you're already, uh, East coast north. Yeah. So I don't know, Maine-ish. Are you up over there? Northeast? Um, yeah, I, I, it might be a little chilly over there. Well, you got warmer weather. So anywhere, anywhere east of me is going to get uh, warmer weather over the next day or two. Because ours usually, you know, the jet stream pushes it over from, you know, from from Midwest just straight east most of the time. Unless there's some kind of storm system coming up from somewhere, typically the uh, the jet stream will push that stuff that way. Hopefully, you get some good weather because it's uh, it's it's great out. Like I, I can't believe it, it's, and it's so dry. Um, Let's see, dude, <laughs> hey, uh, WHG5, dude, thank you so much, man, you guys are so, so generous, thank you so much, gifted five uh, tier one subs, dude, thank you so much, appreciate it, uh, if you can't tell what I don't know what to say, I say dude a lot, dude and man, so I appreciate it, dude, man, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, so, um, so, uh, Matrim, uh, uh, Bara, that's what I'm going with, Damien Coop, uh, incoming stick <laughs> up to entropy and uh wanna own a death star enjoy your gifted sub from whg5 dude thank you so much appreciate it appreciate it thank you thank you um let's see uh, yeah thank you oh yeah link and i can hear that i can hear the chime now so thank you let's see uh john 5s uh weather is great 60 degrees fahrenheit and windy yeah so you i bet you're a little bit east of me then because we had the wind the wind is usually uh, I, I don't know if it's what brings in the weather, but just that change from, you know, 30, 40 to 60, you know, there's a, uh, uh, there's a lot of wind usually that happens around those times. I can always tell them, like, you know, if it's going to be 60 or 70 degrees in November here in Minnesota, it's going to be windy. I can almost without a doubt say it. And so we had really strong winds coming through last night. Felt like I was about back in South Dakota. I was like, whoa, it is so windy here. <laughs> hey, Echo, dude, Echo, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Dude, Green Ant Stream, cheered 100 bits. Thank you, thank you. Get to see my Mega Man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the bits. Appreciate it. Man, you guys are lighting up my raspberry pie back there. I don't think it stopped. <laughs> I don't think it stopped yet. Uh, so thank you, appreciate it. The thing is going to blow up. <laughs> no, it's not going to blow up. Uh, if it does, I have automation in place to reboot it. So <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, sunny and 72 in Denver. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Sunny and 72 in Denver sounds fantastic because I'm sure it's dry there too. Ah, I love, I love Colorado. I love, I love as like right on the edge of, of, uh, the Midwest and West. Uh, I mean, that's West of us obviously, but uh, I love like Colorado, that area. So super jelly, good weather <laughs> and good scenery for sure. Uh, I mean, Josh called that one out. Edie, Edie, uh, 920. I'm in Arizona, currently mid seventies and sunny, man. I think most of the United States has good weather, good weather, except for, except for PC geek. He says it's chilly up there, but I'm okay with chilly. Uh, it depends. Uh, chilly to me is around 30, 30, 40. That's kind of chilly, not cold enough yet for me to call it cold, but, <laughs> but yeah. Um, Insta Dell fan club. I like instant Dell fan club. <laughs> Love the title of the stream. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't even know. I, I totally winged it this time. I was like, new server room, who it is? I was just like, doesn't doesn't make a ton of sense. I, I uh, but wanted to be funny. Glad you noticed. Glad you noticed. Uh, Jim, G G G G Y N N Y. Uh, hi Tim. Uh, new here. I've been following your channel. Learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Uh, Frosty, has anyone gotten Taiga Docker set up? running with compose this comes up every now and then to where i it's 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 not often enough to where i even remember what taiga does i it, it's either um can't remember if it's like a, a, a task management system or a ticket support system but it's something along work management um and someone asks me this like once every six months and i'm like what is it again but i'll, I'll look into it i haven't personally but the last time someone asked me if uh, i've gotten it to work i had to look it up and i thought well, it shouldn't be too bad, but I could be wrong. Um, dude, ping me, ping me in Discord. Let's figure it out. What's going on with it, Frosty? Let's figure it out. Ping me in Discord to remind me. 
Uh, Wise TV. Oh, there's a new server room video. I didn't see it yet. Yeah, it's been yeah, it's uh, been kind of busy. It's totally fine. It's totally fine if you didn't see it and you don't have to watch it. I don't mean to not trying to promote that, but I just talking about what a what I've been working on. Uh, Toru Makata, uh, I'm watching Techno Tim on my new laptop with Ubuntu Budgie. Nice, yeah, all out, bleeding edge, woot. Uh, shout out for the fine folks uh, at Laptop with Linux in the Netherlands. They are great. I'll have to check them out. Yeah, Ubuntu Budgie. I, I don't even think I've checked out uh, Budgie yet. No, the desktop. Uh, 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 yeah, because I, I, I have dual boot here. I need to flip over and, uh, and update it this weekend. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, Alec, got my URL, took a week off uh, to get it going. Got my URL, took a week off to get it going. Nice. Yeah, I like it. like it. Uh, first time chatter. So many first time chatters. Thank you so much for being here and thanks for chatting. I really appreciate it. Uh, Green Ant Stream. Hey, from Dubai. Hey, how's it going? Hey, from Minneapolis. Hey, thanks for tuning in from India. I appreciate it. It's probably really late there. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, Richie Rich, first time, another first time viewer. Thank you so much. First time chatting, uh, catching a stream, uh, followed you here after finding you on YouTube like two to three months ago. All right. All right. Uh, so a lot of people joined early on. Uh, I'm sorry for those <laughs> older videos. I, I mean, uh, they, they, hopefully they weren't too bad. I've been slowly trying to figure out, uh, uh, just how to act normal in front of a camera. Still haven't figured it out. That's why I think I do better behind a camera or if I'm occupied, so I don't think about it like my tutorials, which most of them are. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I, I appreciate it. Uh, so two to three months. Thank you so much. And thanks for joining today. And thanks for first time chatting and Twitch. Appreciate it. Instant Dell fan club. <laughs> I like it. Instant Dell fan club. Uh, Techno Tim, what notification services do you use? This is this is instant. How's it going, man? Uh, for alerting uh, to your mobile phone, Boxcar, Gotify, Prowl, Pushover, Join. Ooh, lots of notification services here. Um, so, what notification services do I use? So, um, so I, I don't know if you saw. Um, uh, I think uh, about a month ago or something. Not super important when, but I, I did this video about Uptime Kuma, and so Uptime Kuma is really an uptime monitor for for services or anything with an IP or that can respond to DNS, or that can has a web services that's up and running. So I went all in, I went all in. I, I probably should, it's actually on the screen right now because one of my services keeps flickering, so I have it open. Anyways, uh, so I, I, I spun up Uptime Kuma and it's, it's so awesome, it's so nice, and it's so fantastic, like it, it's so well done. I, I mean, the, you don't see like a UI this clean and something this polished, it, it's rare that you see something this clean and this polished. Um, in the, uh, uh, um, uh, that, that's free and open source. I'm not saying that not, you know, I, I guess it's a, a pretty broad stroke, but, uh, it's been a while since I've seen something that, that, that solves uh, a particular need for me so well. And so I use Uptime Kuma, uh, from there I monitor a lot of my services. And so I don't monitor them. I don't, I don't ping them. Um, I do, I run a lot of web services so I set up uh, health check endpoints on uh, a lot of my services so I can just do a health check endpoint because that tells me two things. Uh, one, is the service up somewhere? And two, is it healthy? And uh, the reason why I, I personally don't do ping on these is because they're in Kubernetes. I don't care what machine they're on. You know, that's the, that's the, the nice part about Kubernetes. All of my 30, 40, 50 services that are running Kubernetes, I don't care what node they're on. I don't care if they're on a Pi right now. I don't care if they're you know, on a, a, a one of my other virtual machines or which node in, in all of my virtual machines. I just care that they respond. And so I have HTTP uh, health check status endpoints turned on for all of them. And that's what I monitor. So that's, that's the monitoring piece. And then I monitor DNS. So I have three internal DNS servers. Uh, and then I have a load balance one. So I even checked the load balance one too. It kind of went overboard. And then there are some services I do ping like TrueNAS. Like I, you know, there's, there's no easy way. I'm not going to go through and try to figure out how to, Hey, is, is SMB service up and running? I don't care. If the IP is up, I can guarantee that uh, TrueNAS is up. So there's, there are some that I monitor with IP. That's on the alerting side. And then, so on the the monitoring side or the reporting side, sorry if I'm peeking out, I don't know what happened to my audio. Well, I know what happened to my audio, it's Windows 11. Uh, I have one beef with Windows 11, but I won't go there now because <laughs> I'm sure they'll fix it and it's not that important. This is, I'm running Windows 11 now. Anyways, um, so then there's the alerting side. So how do we get alerted? And so uh, Uptime Kuma supports up to, I, I'm, 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 this is all from their documentation and some of their marketing, but they, they, they uh, support up to 70 ways to notify you that something's down or up or has recovered. They do recovery too, which is so awesome. 
Uh, anyways, I'm, I'm just blown away at how great this open source product is. Um, so I set up personally a uh, Discord server, uh, and, I, and I do it in that video too. But uh, for a while, I, before Discord, I used Slack. I had my own personal Slack channel. I've had it for years and years, probably six, seven years, my own personal Slack channel. That's where I always used to report all of my uptime, downtime, anything that I need to know what's going on. Uh, I, I just dump it in there in a Slack channel. Uh, but Slack has, you know, Slack is Slack and, you know, they need to make money. And so they, they, they'll like tr only show you the last 10,000 messages, which sounds like a ton. But, you know, it, it's not really <laughs> if you're logging stuff. So anyways, I, I, now I have a private Discord server that only I'm in that a lot of my alerts go to to let me know. So why didn't I do it there versus anything else? Well, one, I always have Discord open somewhere on my phone or on my desktop, and it's it's really easy to get to. Uh, and two, um, you know, it's it's free. <laughs> it's free, and there aren't any limitations on the messages. Arguably, I don't need to go back in time 30 days to say, was the service up then? No, I, I don't need to do that. Um, but most of the stuff I do now, as far as chat is concerned, outside of work stuff, is on Discord. So I, it was just a natural place for me to put it. So I have different channels in my own private server on Discord where I dump out all of these messages. Like I have an uptime channel, I have a service alerts channel, I have a logging channel. I mean, I, I do still log. I aggregate uh, most of my logs and I send them to Graylog. It's going to be changing soon internally. Uh, but the things I need to be really uh, aware about, I actually log out to Discord too. So as my services are running, if they hit an error and something happens, I log it out. And I, uh, I, I log that all out to a real logging server. But at the same time, in a Discord, private Discord server that only I have access to, <laughs> in, a, in a channel that only I have access to, you know, I'll dump out uh, the log or the error that happened. Anyways, uh, so that's what I use. Uh, I don't use anything anything fancier than that and so it's it's super easy to set up if you're using uptime kuma and you're using discord all you do is create a webhook on that channel uh and then uh and then uptime kuma will post to it so webhook very fancy it sounds so fancy and complicated i don't know why they call it this maybe the way i explain it is even more complicated than this but a webhook really is just an endpoint that that takes some data and does something with it and so in discord you can create a webhook uh, an endpoint, a web endpoint, which is just a URL that takes a post body, which is an HTTP verb, a post with a data payload, and then does something with it. What does Discord do with it? Well, they take it, create a message, and then display content in that message. So anyways, sorry, I'm not like going like Discord 101 and HTTP stuff. You guys probably all know this, but uh, that's what I do. That's what I do. And it, it's, uh, I had this pattern in place with Slack for the last five, six years. So it, to me, this this pattern that I've had is nothing new. The platform I'm doing it on has changed. And and, it, and it's really because I just use Discord a lot more than Slack. And then uh, why not? I, I like Discord a lot, so. Yeah, dude, instant, good question, man, good question. Um, and there's probably a lot of other fancier things you can do than that, but, um, and like I said, like, uh, Discord isn't my system of record for logs or system of record for alerts. Um, uh, really that goes into Greylog for now. Uh, but really my system, uh, it, it's just a way to, to, to bubble up those higher, more critical things to me so that I can look at them on the go. I don't need to VPN into anything. I don't need to go into Greylog's clunky UI over VPN in a mobile device. I can just open up Discord, open up my private server, look at the one channel and say, yeah, that server went down, but oh, it recovered. So anyways, <laughs> yeah, some of that's in that video. I, a lot of that's in that video. So, uh, but it, it's super fun. PC Geek, yeah, I, I, I uh, instant, I recognize it. I figured it was instant, but when I saw Dell Fan Club, I was like, eh, I know he likes Dell, but would he name himself that? So how's it going? Amaze Josh, haha, -ha, yes, doing great, man. Now my wife got married. Congratulations, Amaze Josh. Sorry, it took me a while to get to it. Last I talked to you, which was not too long ago, I thought it was your fiance. So congratulations to you, man. Ho hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Johnny5S, hey Tim, I've set up Uptime Kuma, speaking of the devil. Uh, it was easy to set up and getting notifications. Instant, it's like it's like you planted him here, <laughs> or I did. Uh, John 5S, Johnny5S, awesome. Uh, my last network monitor software didn't notify me. Thanks for the video on Uptime Kuma. Oh, it's 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 like I it's like I planted people in here. But no, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, instant, uh, read two lines down. You probably did about ten minutes ago. <laughs> 
Uh, Maphne, I did some remote support for someone to get back online. It's always DNS. I just did some remote support to get someone back online. It's always DNS. It is, isn't it? It is, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, damn, my, did my secret name give it away? Yeah, instant. Anytime I see instant in the front, I, I, I'm always hesitant. Uh, I, I think it might be you, but uh, but the Dell fam club, I was like, okay, either he's trolling Dell, trolling me, or he's he really loves Dell. <laughs> Uh, Green Ant Stream uh, was just starting to watch your new server room tour and tuning in for the first time. Green Ant, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for the cheer, too. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, banana. So that's our test to make sure the bot's up. Uh, John Doe Norris, I've been, I've been trying to tweak my PFSense network setup. All right. Lag and free SB, lag uh, and free BSD is weird compared to the Linux bond. It's been dropping a lot of uh, packets with identical transmission packets uh, with identical new NIC hardware. Still digging digging in to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It, it's tough when you know, uh, you know, free BSD. Like, it, 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 don't get me wrong, awesome, but it, it's you know, it's just different enough from normal. <laughs> I don't even want to say normal. It's just different enough from the rest of Linux because it's not Linux um, that things get weird, especially around drivers and stuff like that, and things that you expect to work. But drivers too, you know. Oh, sorry, I heard a beeping. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was my fire alarm going off, which I would have gotten notified. <laughs> Maybe it's my server room on fire. Who knows? Oh no, it's right there. I thought I heard my. That was weird. I, I did hear a beeping, but it must have been someone else. Anyways, uh, my house is not on fire. <laughs> if it is, uh, I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, so it's tough on on FreeBSD. You know, there are things that are you know uh, different, especially drivers. Sometimes they don't get the attention or the development that a lot of Linux stuff does. So it's tough. It's tough. So hopefully it works out. Hopefully you figure it out. Uh, PC Geek Redeem, yeah, thank you. Thanks for changing it, man. Uh, Green Ant Stream, absolutely love your work, and you are the main influence for me starting a home lab. All right, I don't know whether to say thank you or sorry. <laughs> no, uh, no, thank you. Thank um, I'm glad. Um, I'm glad you got inspired by it. Um, you know, break it off into chunks. You don't have to go all in. You know, a lot of times I talk about server gear, Raspberry Pi, old PC, absolutely fine, absolutely perfect. Don't think you always have to like. Uh, build a server rack and, you know, let's fill this whole thing full of stuff <laughs> while fun. Um, you know, it, it can be an expensive hobby um, and it can use a lot of electricity too. So um, just, just, just attack it uh, a little bit at a time. Um, and uh, you know, your needs will grow over time. And if they do, then you can expand, but yeah, awesome. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. Uh, just pass that on, pass that on to someone else. If you know someone who's kind of interested in show them your stuff, you know, and pass that, pass that inspiration on. That's all I ask. <laughs> wow, man. Thank you so much. Um, I, I might, might've missed this one, but, uh, did that just, no, yeah, it was a while ago. Uh, up to entropy, dude, thank you. Uh, I, I missed this one. So I apologize. Thanks for the gifted sub, gifted a sub to Szechuan pancake. Dude, thank you so much. I, I apologize. I missed that one. I need to turn up my notifications just a tiny bit. So I hear them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then, uh, chaotic, chaotic 42. Thank you so much. Gifted five tier one subs. Dude, you guys are so generous. Thank you. Um, gifted to Abdurham, uh, I'm going with Rocket Boy, uh, Sim Buildings, uh, the original Luke Ace, and Dr. CTL, Dr. Control, Dr. Cuddle. I'm going to go with Dr. Cuddle. Because <laughs> some people say Coop Cuddle, so I'm going to go with Dr. Cuddle. Dr. Cuddle, enjoy your gifted sub. All you guys enjoy your gifted sub from Chaotic. Dude, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, Let's see, uh, where did I leave off on? First time chat, love your videos. I'm thinking of setting up right, dude, thank you so much. Green Ant Stream, thank you, I can hear it now. Hey, cheered 100 bits, thank you so much. Thank you, Mega Man, all right. All right, all right, all right. Uh, this is how I skip over stuff, so I apologize. Uh, Phipps, Phipps01, uh, first time chat, we were all these few first time people chatting, thank you so much. Thanks for having the courage <laughs> and, uh, and hanging out and, and actually speaking, so I, I appreciate it. Hi, Tim. Sorry for my English is pretty bad. So far, it's excellent. Uh, I speak French from Switzerland, uh, but your Proxmox video helped me uh, a lot. That was perfect English. No need to even apologize. So thank you, Phipps. English was spot on. If you wouldn't have said uh, your English is bad, I wouldn't even know you didn't speak English. So perfect English. And even if it's not, I speak terrible English. And that's my first language. So <laughs> no need to worry about it. But thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Edie, dude. Prime sub tier one. Thank you so much, man. You guys are so generous. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Involute. Involute. Uh, love your videos. Thank you. Uh, I'm thinking of setting up radar, sonar, uh, 
Bazaar, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I see it all the time, and Plex, are you planning on making a video about them? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I considered it. Um, I considered it, um, but some of those <laughs> some of those products can be used uh, 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 to, to, to get access to content um, that people don't have licenses for. That's probably the easiest way and the most polite way to say it. Now, I'm not saying you are, uh, but most of the time, uh, I shouldn't even say most of the time, it's generalizing. Um, a lot of the times those can be used to, to acquire media that you don't have licenses for. I, you know, I try to avoid that topic altogether. Um, so uh, I, I, I probably won't, and there's probably lots of great guides out there to do it. Um, I don't use it myself. Um, and you know, a lot of the stuff that I, I teach or, or talk about are things I use myself because I, I uh, one want to be knowledgeable about, about it, and two I want to you know I want to I want to use a I want to talk about a product that I'm passionate about or excited about um, or have some experience about, and so I can talk about it semi intelligently. Uh, and not that I don't understand, you know, radar, sonar, bazaar, I think that's how you pronounce it. And Plex, I do understand Plex for sure. I run that. Uh, the other three, I don't. So, um, yeah, uh, I, there are lots of great guides on it. I've seen them out there, uh, how to automate everything, uh, even requesting content. But like I said, I try to avoid that. I try to avoid that. And it's not because they're bad products or it's a bad technology. It's just sometimes they can be used to acquire media that people don't have licenses to. And so I just kind of, you know, I, I try to avoid that topic. I'm not saying everyone's going to, uh, but I try to I try to avoid it. Uh, uh, but I have something on Plex. I did one a while ago on how to do it in Docker and even in Kubernetes. Um, I might, maybe, maybe, maybe it's time to dust off the old, uh, the old Plex tutorial. Um, you know, I, I've, I've done it in many different ways. Um, like I said, there, there's lots of great tutorials out there. Um, you know, I, like I said, I have one on Plex and then I have one on how to pass your GPU through to Docker. So then on a virtual machine, so then Plex can have access to it. Um, but haven't done one just all out on just like, here's Plex, you know, Plex 101, because uh, there's 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 lots of good stuff out there. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cheat95. Hi, I learned about Spanning Tree and built a light controller with the Raspberry Pi's GPIO ports. Um, so MOSFETs uh, and some MOSFETs, ML MOSFETs, I need, to, I need to look into that word, to build a Halloween show. Nice. The kids in the small town I lived in loved it on October 31st. Nice. So you built a light controller with Raspberry Pi GPIO ports. That is awesome. That is awesome. That sounds fantastic. That's, that's kind of what I did down there. I have, a, I have a hat that goes on top of a GPIO pins on a Raspberry Pi that then I plug my LED panel into and I can generate images using a lot of libraries. I mean, I, I don't figure it out myself. There's a library that does it for me. I'm just like image generate <laughs> and it does it, but I assembled it and wrote some code to do all that. So Awesome. I bet the kids loved it. I bet kids, I bet, I bet the kids loved it. So awesome. Thank you for sharing. Dude, Rudecore has sub, Prime Sub. Thank you so much. Thanks for spending your Prime Sub on me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Rudecore, like it. How's it going? First time viewer in chat. I love it. Love it. Uh Fletch. Howdy howdy. How's it going? Good to see you. Uh Shoko. Oh, here we go. Shoko. I'm going with Shoko. Shoko SC. Uh, hello, Tim and everyone. Just wanted to ask if you're planning some content around video games. Not talking about hosting a Minecraft server. You already done that. But anything related to a video game, local Steam cache, maybe uh, Valheim Helm chart. Uh, can you talk about your private WoW server is that banned? Thanks for streaming. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, it's funny that people find that. Um, so stuff about video games. I've tried to, you know, I, I tried to like, 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 you know, I don't know, somehow bring the two together. Um, and I, you know, I have content on my, in my backlog for gaming stuff, gaming server, managing, uh, gaming, managing gaming servers. Um, uh, you know, the land cache one from steam comes up quite a bit. Um, but I, I just haven't gotten to it yet. I, I, I have a long backlog. Honestly, I have like 50 or 60 videos that I'm like, I would love to do this. I would love to do this. And something always bubbles up every week. You know, every every week or you know, I, I only plan the next video out. Maybe this next two out. Uh, right now, I have two or three competing for next, and so it's it's always a game of prioritization, like everything. Um, I would love to. I would love to. Um, uh, so talking about uh, private WoW server, uh, yeah. So I I did build an open source version of this thing called well, I forked this thing called Trinity Core. Trinity Core is like a it's a learning platform to learn how to uh, uh, how <laughs> how 
the original World of Warcraft works. Uh, I did fork it uh, a while ago, and I I added some bots to it to learn uh, uh, about how to how to how to program some AI or some bots, um, as well as do some other customizations. And then I put it in a Docker container because I'm like, this thing is massive, and a lot of people are having troubles like compiling this code just to get it to run. So I built Docker containers for it. Um, but I generally don't talk about those things. Those are just things I do out in open source for fun. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that people were having problems, you know, compiling something on Mac, Windows, Linux, and there's a billion guides on how to set up your whole entire dev environment just to compile this one binary. So I, I just put it all in a Docker container and now, now people don't have to compile it. So um, generally those are things I just do without talking about them. <laughs> and it's it's always awesome when people discover that, uh, I, I you know, I work on those things too. Um, um, but in general, um, if it, if, if it's interesting enough to me and it's what I worked on this week or last week, um, yeah, it, it makes its way into content. Uh, that's, that's kind of my criteria. <laughs> I have limited time. I know that we all do, uh, but I have limited time throughout the week cause I, you know, I have full-time job too. Uh, so it's really like, okay, what project am I going to tackle this week? And could I possibly make content about it? That's, that's, that's my number one requirement, uh, before I even think about doing something. Uh, so yeah, it sounds, sounds awesome. Um, game stuff is, has always been on my, uh, backlog. I've tried to mix it in a little bit or sprinkle it in into certain things. Uh, but I just, I, I need a, I need a, I need a reason. I need a reason. You know, I need a lot of people to ask me about it. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, so many people are asking me about this. I should probably do it. But good question. Thank you. Theo, how's it going? Theo, how's it going? How, how are you? Haven't seen your name in a while. Hope you're well, man. Uh, cheat 95, uh, show was synced with, uh, with a music track. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, was synced up. Uh, I, I have this weird thing where like, I want to make music videos about servers and technology. I don't know why. I don't know why I, I obviously, I mean, a lot of people do, but I love music and, um, recording things is fun. I'm not the greatest at it, nor do I have the best gear. Uh, but I, I like to make little music videos. I always have, <laughs> uh, or sync things up to sound for sure. I, I always kind of have, and I always kind of sprinkle some of that into my, uh, to my videos this time I, di I did it uh, intentionally because I did it in the first one but this one I just was like all right I'm gonna do this whole like a minute and a half montage because why not <laughs> thanks for noticing uh green ant stream uh I now have dl20 gen 10 nice sino uh sino ds920 plus three pies on top of my win desktop uh and mint on a knuck 11 all because your tutorials oh no <laughs> yeah awesome cannot thank you enough for your advice thank you green ant stream uh i'm like i said before i don't know whether i'd say you know i'm sorry or or thank you no i'll say thank you uh i'm i'm glad you enjoyed it um and continue to enjoy it um the nice part about is that everything you you listed off can be repurposed for other things if you decide to do other things in the future. And there's a huge market for this stuff. If you decide one day you're not going to do it, it's so easy to sell this stuff. I thought I was going to have the hardest time selling my R710. Uh, I sold it within like two days of posting it. And uh, uh, there are a lot of people are, are definitely interested in it. So yeah. Dude, Home Lab New, how's it going? Uh, resub, tier one, 16 months, 12 months streak. How's it going, man? 16 months well spent. Hi, Tim. How's it going, man? UK or US? I'm, I'm betting I'm betting you're in the UK. I'm betting you're in the UK uh, today, at least. <laughs> uh, Corsair. Uh, hey, devs. How's it going? How's it going? Uh, first time chat. Oh, these first time chat. I love it. I love it. Uh, Tim C. Hey, how's it going? Pizza Geek sub hike. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, Green Ant Stream. My stack in Portainer currently consists of, all right, here we go, Plex, Radar, Sonar, Transmission, uh, NZB Get, uh, Libre Speed, Heimdall, uh, Jacket, Guacamole, and NPM. Uh, most have come from your videos. Awesome. Congratulations. Awesome. I think we were just talking about that that combo earlier. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a great combo. It's a great combo. A lot of, lot of, lot of things I've, I've talked about in there and a lot of things I recognize for sure. Um, great stack. Portainer is a fantastic product. Um, I run three or four instances here, um, and they run a lot of my single instance, you know, Docker images and it's, and it's great. It's great for sure. Uh, Edie, I'm going with Edie. Uh, I loved your server room tour. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I didn't notice anything weird with the lighting. Uh, but I know when I do something, all I can see are the flaws. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I'm glad you didn't see anything w weird with the lighting because I, I do. <laughs> Every time I see the, the cut scene from like the first uh, 10 seconds, I'm like, ooh. Uh, and again, that was I, I filmed that whole thing with my iPhone. Um, um, 
got a new iPhone and I was like, uh, this camera right here, I don't have image stabilization and it's so hard, you know, to, to, to keep the camera stable without a tripod. And I wanted this one to be more fluid. And I was like, you know what? Got this new phone. Apple's been talking it up. I'm going to go for it. Um, anyways, they do some overcompensation in low light. I should have turned that off. But anyways, thank you so much. I, I totally agree. I mean, it's, it's like when you eat your own cooking. I don't know if you guys are like that, but when you eat something you made yourself, you're just kind of like, oh yeah, could add more salt, needs more pepper, not as spicy as it should be. It's too dry, but everyone else is like, this is fantastic. And now they're either giving you lip service or it really is fantastic. But I think most of the time you create anything, you're like, you are your own biggest critic. So I, I hear you when you say all you can see is the flaws because that's that's what I see too. So thank you. Thanks. Uh, John Norris, thanks. PC Geek, Discord. All right. Thanks for sending that link. Uh, Chaotic. Uh, built two home lab servers from scratch. Discrete parts. All right. Inspired by your videos. Building TrueNAS server now. Nice. Yes, I love it. 100% custom builds too. I love it. I totally love it when I hear that people just a lot braver than I am, but like, you know, buy a bare bones server. And when I say bare bones, I'm talking about just the chassis and, and the board, and then they're buying CPUs and then the RAM. Well, I did all that, but then like down to every single part, the rails, the kits, the hard drives. I'm like, Ooh, that is a, uh, that is awesome. Uh, a lot, uh, you have a lot more patience than I do, but, uh, totally awesome. Let me know how your TrueNAS server build goes. Uh, should be Pretty straightforward. The ZFS stuff is the only part that gets kind of tricky, but there are a lot of calculators out there that'll help you plan your 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 ZFS volume, um, and it's uh, it's rock solid. It's one of the things I never I never worry about my TrueNAS server. I take that back. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was something weird on NFS when I reboot, but I re rebooting was weird. Other than that, like it like TrueNAS is so rock solid with with ZFS uh, itself for the pool and the volume, uh, but I use NFS. SMB, uh, I use Minio or object storage and something else on there. I can't even remember right now. I use like so many different services and storage solutions within there and it's just rock solid. Like I never have to worry like something wrong with my true NAS server. I just, I, I almost forget it's there, which is what you want with all technology. Get out of the way and just work, right? And so true NAS is one of those things. It's just rock solid that I forget I even have it. It's that good. It's that good. Yeah, so thank you. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Green Ant Stream, your work is uh, your work is very good. Don't stress. Thank you. I, I always do. I always do. It's just me. I worry. I worry and stress and and critique myself a lot. Uh, Tim C, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, first time chat. Love it. All these first time chatters. Uh, Minu SDK. Uh, I like servers and all. Uh, this is all though. I don't. Um, sorry. I like servers and all this. Although I don't uh, own any at home. Reason is power and price. I 100% I agree. Uh, I can't get myself to pay uh, the power price, 100% agree. Uh, I can see your servers draw at almost 500 watts, that's right, an hour. In my country, that would be $1 for every four hours it runs. Frankly, my question is, do you have any concerns on power prices uh, now that we're uh, looking into a possible energy crisis? Uh, yeah, like I always want to keep my, my energy down. Um, that uh, so what you saw on there was a little bit misleading because I turned on some servers. So like one server, the uh, the one that I said the PC conversion one, the one that I said uh, is my backup server. That's only on for thirty minutes a day. So um, there was about you know an eighty eight uh, roughly sixty seventy eighty additional watts that you saw in that video that were being pulled because that server was on and actually trying to do backups and stuff. I turned it on while I was filming because I wanted the lights on. That guy's usually off. No excuses. Um, yeah, does it draw a lot of power? I'm sure it does. I have some workloads in there that, uh, uh, and it's and it's. Uh, let me let me reel this back a little bit. So I have some workloads that do uh, encoding video 24/7. That's all it does, uh, and that that takes a lot of energy. I'm not gonna lie, uh, but at the same time, that's a service that I provide for for something, and so that that kind of has to run until that service isn't gonna run anymore. Arguably, if I if I weren't running that service, I could downsize quite a bit. It's it's that one service where I needed a GPU to do some encoding uh, in Kubernetes uh, to make to that really uh, 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 made my 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 power footprint and my home lab kind of explode because I was like, okay, well uh, I might as well get virtualization server so I can virtualize this thing, and then I can throw all these additional nodes in there. So. Um, Long story short, not making any excuses. I am, I, I'd love to get my power down. I'd love to draw 50 watts. Uh, it's not really possible with what I'm doing now, 
Um, but I do have some low power ideas here in the future. You could see some of that stuff on the wall where I'm already thinking about it. Like what is the minimum uh, I can run at home? Uh, and those minimum things are gonna be on that wall where my server rack is gonna be not on demand, but it will be, um, um, <laughs> it will be my high powered uh, uh, cluster and then things on the wall are gonna be my, my low powered, hey, if I, if I didn't need some of this stuff, what's the minimum I could run? Um, um, type of uh, environment. I shouldn't even say cluster because so, some of it won't be clustered. Anyways, absolutely 100% of my mind. It's uh, do I want to draw that much power? I roughly draw about 380 uh, when things are off and kind of normal. Do I want to do that? No. <laughs> you know, I, I, I definitely want a lower carbon footprint and, you know, uh, it's, it's the right thing to do. And plus it costs less money in electricity, but it's also the right thing to do. So it's tough. And that's why I always recommend against like, if someone is going to go and buy a big, huge server just to run as their NAS, I, I always recommend against it mainly because just the power draw. Uh, and uh, when that's all they need to do is, is run something like a NAS. And I'm, I, I always air quote that because it's just an NAS. It's a very important job. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, you can get by with a little compute uh, with a lot of storage. For me, I, I kind of went both. I went uh, a lot of storage, a lot of compute, because I need the compute right now. Uh, but like I said, if if one or two of my workloads ever drop, then I could really, really uh, drop a lot of that power. A lot of that is from that one or two virtual machines that are doing the video encoding. I, I bet they draw, I should I should measure it, individual virtual machines, but I, I bet they draw over 100, 150 themselves uh, because of the workload that they're doing. So yeah, no, call me out. I, I totally agree. Uh, am I worried about it? Uh, yeah. Would I, would I like to use less power? Absolutely. I think we, I think we all would. Yeah. Fair, fair question. Thank you. Um, menu, menu SDK. I mean, for me, I can get a lot of servers out of the house for $180 a month, uh, a month if I were to run, uh, 500 Watts an hour. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I wish, I wish running in the cloud was cheaper. Uh, it's, it's, it's not, it's not cheaper. It's, it's actually expensive to run in the cloud. It's a lot cheaper for me to run things at home than it is in the cloud, especially if you need GPU compute. That is like the most expensive thing you can buy. <laughs> you can rent in the cloud as a GPU. I, I mean, I say that without actually going through all the stuff. Last I checked, it's, it's like so cost prohibitive that like it's, it's, it, it just doesn't make a ton of sense. I'm hoping that changes in the future. I would love to run hybrid you know, hybrid, some stuff here, some stuff there, uh, but coordinate the stuff here or at a higher level between, you know, home and the cloud, and then just shift, shift workloads. You know what, electricity went up, let's shift it to the cloud, uh, any cloud provider I want, uh, and then, you know, and then base it all on price. Uh, GCP went up this week, let's shift it to Azure. Oh, Azure's, <laughs> you know, and then AWS is cheaper, let's shift some of the stuff to AWS. Uh, sounds awesome. Sounds complicated. Um, but I, I would love to be in that situation. Uh, but not right now. Uh, yeah, but uh, lots of, lots of great ideas. Uh, train, train, uh, trying, trying, I'm going with that 1996. Uh, what reverse proxy are you using for your, uh, public services? Oh, reverse proxy. I got a couple, uh, mostly traffic, mostly traffic. I'm a huge fan of traffic. I have lots of tutorials on traffic. Um, because it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, container first or cloud first. Uh, it's pretty awesome. That's, that's usually what I use. Uh, arguably though, you, you could say Cloudflare though, too, because Cloudflare, um, if you use their reverse proxy in their SSL, they're actually then taking, bearing the brunt of, of all of those public requests, um, um, publicly and you use them as your public IP, uh, and your reverse proxy. So I mean, uh, technically it is Cloudflare, uh, but uh, behind that, I have another reverse proxy that is traffic, I'll put it that way. Uh, but for a lot of my public stuff, I use Cloudflare because uh, their free package is fantastic and they, they take care of a lot of, um, a lot of things that you know, n normal people like me uh, don't think about or have the capacity to, to actually do. Um, they do a lot of threat management and a lot of bot detection and a lot of uh, 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 inspection of traffic to, to stop that stuff before it even gets to, to, to me. I mean, that's why a lot of companies use Cloudflare publicly and not just little people like me. Uh, but, but technically, yeah, Cloudflare first, then I use traffic and then I again use traffic 
And then I probably use, yeah. You know, so I think I have three or four instances of traffic in my home lab. I'll, I'll put it that way. Uh, but public facing stuff technically goes to Cloudflare first. Uh, not only to, to keep things a little bit uh, separated and anonymous, but they handle a lot of garbage that I just don't even want hitting my reverse proxies. They, it hits them first. Um, PC Geek VPN work fine with, uh, works fine uh, with how I have it set up uh, with running the client on the desktop or mobile laptop. So I have no problem accessing just trying to have a single site use uh, single site to use single site to site using client mode. Okay, all right, site to site. It's, I've only configured site to site a few times. It's it's awesome, uh, but only configured a few times. Uh, and you're using PFSense, I think, which would mean OpenVPN, I think, I think, I'm guessing. Um, Edie, uh, do you have any thoughts on TrueNAS scale? Are you gonna use it? Oh yeah, great question. Uh, do I have any thoughts on TrueNAS scale? Yeah, I'm super excited about it. Am I gonna use it? Yeah, absolutely am. Yeah, absolutely I am. Uh, and the, not that anything's really wrong uh, with with TrueNAS itself, so TrueNAS Core, uh, what I'm using now. Um, it's just that with TrueNAS scale, you know, it's going to, well, a lot more options uh, to scale horizontally, which I don't have now. I can only scale vertically. Not that I need to scale horizontally, but it sounds awesome if I need to do that. It sounds cool to me. Um, but more so, so it's Linux <laughs> and not FreeBSD. Back to this, back to this thing we talked about earlier. You know, there's there's just a huge community around Linux stuff. It uh, scale runs on Debian, uh, which opens uh, a lot of possibilities. Um, one as simple as just getting the Q QEMU guest agent installed. You know, that does not exist for FreeBSD, which is why on Proxmox, because I virtualized my TrueNAS, you know, I don't have the same metrics of monitoring uh, that I get for all of my other virtual machines uh, because they're all Linux and or Windows. Um, this is the only free BSD one that I have or BSD one that I have. So, um, I, you know, I think the thing that I'm most excited for, uh, uh, is, is just not so much the product itself, but the operating system that it's built upon because now I can support it just like all of my other systems that I have. And now I don't have this, this one oddball, uh, in my environment. Not that I need to do a ton of maintenance to it anyways, but it's nice to know that, Hey, you know, if I go to scale, I get Debian. I know how to manage Debian. It's going to be just like managing Ubuntu. I know that all of my tools and, you know, all of my tools and how I manage and SSH and everything is going to work just like the rest of my environment. So uh, am I going to use it? Absolutely. I'm going to wait until it's a little more stable. I'm, you know, I, I, I call me old fashioned. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm usually an early adopter of a ton of stuff. But for this, you know, I, I have 30, 30 ish terabytes of stuff. Not like I would lose it anyways, but I just I just don't want to cross that threshold until until um, it is stable, until it's out of alpha or beta, or you know, until they have a stable release. Uh, not that I trust the product any less, but I you know, uh, and they're obviously marching towards some milestone for a certain reason, and it needs to hit all of these you know requirements to be at that milestone, and I'll I'll let them figure that out, uh, and then I'll then I'll convert. I'll convert. I saw Jeff did it and he's got a tutorial on it already. I'm just going to spin up uh, Craft Computing's uh, tutorial on how to do it and follow that and, and uh, be good with it. And if you haven't done it and you're interested in it, check out Craft Computing's tutorial on it because I think he just did one. He's virtualizing it now. He's a, He was a long time, long time uh, physical uh, install of TrueNAS. Now he virtualized it. I feel, I feel vindicated now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So many people gave me so many crap, so much crap for so long for virtualizing my NAS. And now I'm like, yes, Jeff is doing it. <laughs> Validation. Oh, I'm kidding. Um, uh, uh, up to and Troopy. Uh, hey, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you for the follow. Let's see. Let's see. Thank you for the bits. Thank you. Uh, why, why TV? Why TV? Canada is, is cold, cold AF already. Canada kind of always is. I mean, we're, we're pretty close. We're, we're like South Canada here in Minnesota. So I, I hear you. I hear you. We, we're, we have this warm weather right now. Uh, actually where I'm at in Minnesota, we're actually North of some parts of Canada. So that's why I say we're, we're like South Canada here in, in Minnesota. So I hear you. Yeah. We're, we're North of like Toronto technically, because, you know, it dips down over there by our, our East Coast. And so, like, technically, Minneapolis is actually north of some parts of Canada. So I, I hear you. I hear you. You know, and, and the same goes in the spring. Like, there's still snow up here. And I, I look at, you know, photos of people in, like, Tennessee, and they're, like, flowers, tulips are already coming up. I'm, like, looking outside at four feet of show, I, four feet of snow I still need to shovel. I'm like, oof. <laughs> I hear you. I'm, I'm right there with you. 
Uh, Design. Design PX. Uh, hey, Tim. Hope all is well, man. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, WHG5. Thanks, dude, for all your content. You've inspired me to get my home lab rolling. All right. I'm, I'm, that's awesome. Pass it on. Some, pass something on. You learn to someone or tell someone about it, and, and hopefully they get inspired uh, by it, too. Not about me, but about your home lab and technology, and just get someone else inspired about technology and let them know that, hey, they can do some of this stuff at home, too, with, with, with an old computer, with a Raspberry Pi, with anything, really. Um, Echo, just joined your Discord as well. Friendly and helpful people. I 100% agree, 100% agree. Our, our Discord community, I, I say this almost every stream. Uh, I, somehow, I've been fortunate enough to get really awesome people in a Discord that are helpful, that, that like to help, that uh, will find answers, who uh, empathize with people who are having problems and, and just get people pointed in the right direction. It's, it's super, super awesome. So thankful that this is, I started a Discord server, and uh, it just seems like all the right people keep joining. So I, I super appreciate it. Uh, Green Ant Stream, uh, I love chili. 13C is good for me. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I can go for that. Uh, Piece of Geek, it was 26 last night. It's about 50 right now. Okay, 26 I, I would call chili. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That means uh, I'm putting a winter jacket on and I feel good. <laughs> uh, 50 is pretty good too, and, and unless it's windy. Like last night it was it was uh, 59 here, but there was probably 20, 30 mile an hour gusts, and I was it was like going right through me. Uh, but if it's, if it's calm and 50, I, I love it. Uh, ironic since I live in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, Echo, uh, 71 and sunny near Los Angeles. All right, man, it's a, it seems a little cool for LA, uh, but uh, take it. That sounds great. Um, it's cool. Yeah, 1230. Dubai is not actually in India. Uh, it's in the United Arab Emirates, uh, but I'm from <laughs> but I'm from New Zealand. Been there for 11 years. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally I totally wrong. My geography's all off. I apologize. Green Ant Stream, Windows 11 has been going solid for me, only a couple minor issues. Awesome. Yeah, I, I've only had one issue, and uh, it, it happens to me every time I reboot, my sound devices are non-existent. And it's this weird thing. I I, I don't know if it's uh, GoXLR or if it's Windows 11, uh, but when I, when I boot my system, no sound. Uh, and then I go in the control panel, the new control panel, and I go to sound devices, it shows done. If I go back and then go back into sound devices, they all appear. It's like I have to I have to navigate into it for it to appear, uh, and then after they appear, everything's fine. But the thing that stinks is I don't realize that happened until like, you know, uh, five minutes after, and I have everything in the world open. Well, I have to open and close all of the stuff that I use because that all has sound devices that it thinks, you know, as they start up, they look for sound devices, there's nothing, and so like Discord has no mic. OBS has no mic. Premiere that I edit with has no mic. And so I have to close all those down and open it back up. So minor pain. Uh, that's what I get for being an early adopter. Just talking about it earlier. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, other than that, it's, it's, it's been great. It's been, it's been uh, better than I thought it was going to be. I, I, t I took the leap. Definitely early, earlier adopter than most. I mean, it's, it's out and it's RTM. So it's not too early. Uh, but for the most part, I think people are being cautious about it. Rightfully so. Uh, there's a lot going on in your machine, and it's like, why mess that up? Uh, Szechuan, Szechuan Pancake. Uh, after watching your last video, I bought a couple of those pegboards to organize my equipment with. Thanks for showing us. Yeah, no problem. Uh, relatively cheap, too. You get two. You, so you get the galvanized steel pegboards. You get two in a box. Um, relatively cheap. I think like 40 bucks or something like that, roughly, depending on the day. <laughs> Prices swing so much, even on Amazon lately. Uh, I think so too. I, uh, like after I, I found them, I was like, oh, this, this is great. And then I bought another set just so the, <laughs> so it looked even, but, uh, I, I plan on hanging like tools and other things on the other side because, um, it's nice. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a big fan of hanging things up and getting them off the ground and not on shelves. <laughs> if I do those two things or three things, uh, then I feel good about stuff. And <laughs> then, you know, then my wall turns into just this crazy wall of stuff, but I, at least I can see it. It's all there. Cords are hidden. Uh, I don't have to trip on them and stuff like that. But yeah, hope, hope you enjoy. hope they work out for you. Like they'd be great in like a tool. Like if you have a shop too, fantastic. All different colors. Like any, anyways, I don't, then I know nothing about this brand that made them. I found them and they are awesome. I, I, I went custom on mine, but how I mounted them. But if you ever want to know how I got the wing nuts going, oof, I had to buy this special bolt that is like a wood screw on one side. I forget what they call it. They have a special name. It's like a wood screw on one side. I think it's a lag bolt or something. Wood screw on one side, machine threaded on the other. And so I wood screwed into stand standoffs, put the things up, and then I could use a wing nut 
so then I can undo the wing nut and get behind it for the cords. So <laughs> uh, you probably don't have to go that far. Uh, Wara, Wara, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, IO, IO, IOTCL, thank you guys for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, definitely implementing Uptime Kuma next. Green Ant Stream, awesome. And Grafana, awesome. I totally agree. Hey, thanks for the sub. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Sigor, how's it going? Good to see you. I use Discord for mine too with Uptime Kuma. I totally agree. Uh, it's, it's easy and it's free and it's reliable. Uh, I don't have to spin up my own messaging system to get stuff to me. And I, and, and it, you know, I considered email and stuff. I'm like, I, I don't want email. I don't want to go into like my Gmail and look for these alerts. I want to open up chat that's already open and just peek in there and then send notifications. Ping me with an at if it's down, you know, super simple to do, uh, with, with discord. Uh, Instant Delphi and Cloud Techno Tim. Yeah, Uptime Kuma video is very cool. I have Discord webhook setup too. It's okay, but I might be looking at actual SMS service. Thanks for the reply. No, no problem at all. Yeah, I think uh, you can get you. Yeah, all kinds of SMS services. The only one that I've ever used uh, that has an API to send out SMS or text messages um, is uh, uh, Plevo. That's the only one I use. I don't know if I, you know, it's not an endorsement. It's the only one I've used. I'm sure there are plenty out there that send that stuff out. A uh, bit of fish. Uh, do you have any recommendations for hardening Nginx? I'm using Nginx Proxy Manager Docker image. Do I have any? Uh, ooh, um, you know, I, I I don't have a ton of experience at hardening Nginx at all. I'm sure there's lots of guides out there. I mean, my advice is just uh, do the most minimal thing. Uh, if you're using Nginx, uh, the full Nginx, try Nginx Alpine. Is there one that's built on Alpine? Uh, make sure that your Nginx Docker container that you're using is always up to date. Uh, you can do that by latest, uh, but that's non-deterministic. You know, latest today doesn't mean latest tomorrow or latest yesterday. You could pin to a version, uh, or you can, or you could pin to latest, which would give you all of the updates and the bugs. So it's kind of up to you uh, how you want to you want to either mitigate the risk or stay ahead of the risk, uh, however you look at it. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's make sure you have a good config. Uh, make sure it's minimal, huh? um, and then again, like. If you can use Alpine, uh, use Alpine. Uh, if you're not familiar with Alpine, it's this tiny, tiny Linux distribution. A lot of people like to build Docker containers or Docker images on top of Alpine because it's minimal. Um, and that means two things. One, that you get a very, very small Docker image or Docker container, like one I built the other day for my little link server. I think it's 20 megabytes. Even that I thought was kind of big, but 20 megabytes, I'm running a whole entire web server and services and awesome. Uh, but, but not only is it small, but it's, it's less, uh, attack factor. So a smaller surface of things that need to be patched or that can be attacked. Um, I'm sure there, there, I'm sure there are great guides on them. Uh, but from like a DevOps perspective, those are kind of the things I followed. It's probably not the best, like operational advice. Like, how, you know, what, how, how do you, uh, you know, how, how do you secure it afterwards? Uh, but those are the things I, I follow while building uh, those containers. But I'm sure there's tons of guides out there. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up and maybe ping you in Discord or ping me in Discord and let's figure it out. Um, uh, but Nginx Proxy Manager, I used it for a while but uh, decided against it uh, for other reasons. Fine product, uh, but um, I, I, I can't remember. I thought that was its own Docker image, and so maybe they don't, they don't you know, you're not putting Nginx in front of uh, you probably don't have two images cause you just get the Nginx proxy manager image. Hopefully they offer an Alpine one. I don't know if they do. Um, uh, but it might be worth looking into, uh, it'd be, it'd be probably a good idea to peruse, uh, the, the, the issues list too on GitHub for, for Nginx proxy manager. I'm sure, I'm sure the maintainers there would love to know, uh, how to secure things better. And that's the nice thing about open source is that lots of eyes looking at it, uh, to help contribute to security or features or anything. Uh, so might be worth looking in there. And so everything I just talked about was probably for custom images, Nginx proxy manager specifically, you might even have less options, uh, only because that, you know, they've baked in a version of Nginx into their Docker image that they're pulling from. If you look at their container image, it probably says from Nginx, maybe latest or maybe something. Uh, and your instance of Nginx proxy manager is only going to be as up to date as the one that they pulled unless they update things afterwards. So long story short, I would, I would probably look at their GitHub repo and, uh, and, and see. Abdurum, uh, Hey, Techno Tim, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, how do you approach security for services that face the internet? 
Oh, we talked about some of this. And what do you do to monitor their security health? Uh, how do you go about repairing them if they're compromised? Uh, thanks for any knowledge you share. It's amazing. Oh, wow. Uh, the big topic. Big topic. So um, so first, um, how do I approach security for services that face the Internet? Um, well, I, I mean, I talked about this earlier, but my my general approach now is anything that's, that's public-facing, that's um, – I'm going to use Cloudflare as my load balancer, as my reverse proxy. So I don't use their TCP load balancing product. I only use their reverse proxy product. Most of the things that I self-host uh, uh, are, are, are HTTP services. I don't mean HTTP the protocol, but, you know, an H well, I do mean HTTP the protocol and not necessarily whether or not it's, uh, it's uh, secured with, with uh, TLS or not. Anyways, uh, so I, I usually use Cloudflare first because I'm like, they know they have heuristics. They know fingerprinting. They know bad IPs. They they like know all the garbage about the internet, and all the bots and and, and all the bad actors. Not all, but a, a majority of them, uh, because they're 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 everywhere, omnipresent everywhere, uh, and they protect so many services that they can see these types of attacks or or fingerprint a large number of these things at a higher level, and then aggregate those, analyze them, and then deploy rules out to all of their. Uh, reverse proxies or, or proxy services. So that's that's an easy, that's an easy one is just use Cloudflare. Uh, and I'm not an endorsement. They don't pay me to say it. I, I use it because it's free and it's easy and because uh, a lot of big companies trust them. So that's the first thing I do. Um, actually, that's not even the first thing I do. That's one of the things I do. Um, I, I talk about this a lot too. Uh, I think I brought it up last time, but one of the things I do before I even host something internally is segment that traffic so any anything that you're going to be hosting internally uh at home or anywhere um should be on a different network or a different vlan than the rest of your general workloads i mean uh, i know this is might be hard to do and it sounds like it's a, it's a big pain in the butt kind of is uh, but it's a smart approach to to mitigate your risk to to just in case something gets compromised so um so, so what I do is I, I have, uh, so I've done this for a long time. I used to have a DMZ, which same idea, but now I have a, a VLAN that's only for public workloads. It's only for public workloads and it can't get anywhere else on my network, anywhere, absolutely nowhere uh, through the firewall. And so what that does is it mitigates that risk. And it says, hey, if any one of these systems are compromised, they're only gonna be able to communicate with other systems that are compromised. For you, that might mean the machine you're on right now, the mobile device you're on right now, your light switch, your garage door. Uh, but for me, that means other Kubernetes nodes that are also hardened, that are also running public workloads, which I don't, I mean, I do care, uh, but they can't get any data uh, from the rest of my network. Um, and so that's that's one approach I take right away. Even, I've always done this, even before you start self-hosting anything publicly is, Move that somewhere else. Get it on. Get it off your main network. You know, create create a. If you don't have a, a, a switch that supports layer two networking, create a separate network for it. Uh, in a in a DMZ, a, just a totally different segment of your network. Um, and create some firewall rules to say nothing from that network can get uh, over to this other network. It's very it's 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 very simple to do, especially with PFSense. PFSense supports. Uh, tagging of packets, but even if you don't have a switch that supports it, you can do that without it. Don't need VLANs to start today. So that's one thing I, I, I do even before I host them. And then the rest of it is like I talked about, Cloudflare, SSL on everything. Certificates are, are so easy to get now from Let's Encrypt, um, albeit there's a lot of setup you need to do, uh, but once you have it in place, it's set it and forget it. It truly is. Um, and uh, getting new certificates for new services is, is super easy too. Um, so that's, that's, you know, those are some precautions I take. I mean, nothing is ever, ever fail proof. I mean, if someone wants your stuff bad enough, they're going to get it, you know, and it's, it's, it's just thinking about all of these risks that you can mitigate and where are these speed bumps or roadblocks you can put up in place, uh, to thwart those kind of attacks. Cause most of the time people, I mean, unless they specifically want you and your stuff, most of the time they're just perusing, you know, and browsing, uh, the internet for IPs that have things open and data that they can get. Um, and, you know, who's going to spend a, 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 if someone's running, if I were to run a service like this to gather data and I hit a brick wall against something, you know, there are eight, 
hundred billion other things to go after. It's like, why am I going to spend my compute time and resources after this one thing that's kind of hard? I'll go for the easy stuff. I'm generalizing. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just put some roadblocks up in place and some things in place. So health too. Um, uh, I mean, again, lots of security. I, I mean, I'm not going to go into deep but everything that I have security wise, but you know, do some deep packet inspection, use, uh, services that help you inspect traffic, uh, that stop those types of attacks from happening. You know, that stop, uh, that block, uh, known bad actors from IPs or block known bad networks. Uh, so they don't even get the opportunity to do any of that. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff you do. I'm not going to go into, into detail of everything I do. Cause it's like, <laughs> am I being socially hacked right now? <laughs> no, <laughs> I know you're not. You're just looking for advice. Uh, but that's some higher level stuff you can do. Everything else uh, that you do then internally is yet another layer of stuff that you kind of want to monitor and pay attention to or use systems that do it for you, that have rule sets that will do it for you, uh, that can act for you uh, on your best be in, uh, in your best uh, interests. So anyways, yeah, it's, it's a good question. I could talk about it, uh, but yeah, we're on the internet right now. <laughs> So when we'll see this and they're just taking notes. They're like, if I want to attack him, okay, he uses this. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know you wouldn't. It's 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 later on when this plays somewhere else. It's those people, not you guys. <laughs> Teasing. Uh, so green ant stream. Uh, too late. I already push. I already started going down the rabbit hole of purchasing too much equipment. Yeah, yeah I feel that way too. But uh, like I said earlier, um, you know, I have overbought um, and then I've sold. Um, and I've, I've sold for things for the same price that I bought them for. One thing I sold for more than I bought it for. I mean, more than the the, the, the price that I paid uh, along with shipping. Basically, broke even. So a lot of my home lab stuff, I either take a small loss, which is totally fine with me. I get to use something for years and get a lot of great value and joy out of something. And then take a $20 loss over two years. I'll take that any day. Any day. Because the resale value for this stuff is still super high. Um I'll take that any day. And other things I've sold and I've 100% broke even. Like every part that I put in and paid for along with shipping, I've sold it for the same exact price. And it's it's great. It's great. Just the, the resale value for this stuff is 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 is, is there and high still. So, um, you know, if you ever feel like you overbought, don't feel like you're stuck. You know, I mean, <laughs> you could create more jobs for those things to do, uh, but you could also find people who, who want to buy this stuff or who are interested in this stuff for sure. It's 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 actually surprisingly easier than I thought it was going to be. I was like, who around here is going to want this big old beefy, nasty server? Not nasty, like a bad nasty, but a good nasty. I'm like, this thing is is will crush some compute. And, you know, two days later, gone. <laughs> Cash in my hand. So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, GGGDYN, uh, this week's project was to get my Dell R220, new to me, nice, up with PFSense, perfect. I followed your YouTube, uh, to spin it up, thanks, no problem, but it seems like R220 does not support pass-through. I had to bridge the NIC. Do you think there is a risk by doing this compared to pass-through? Um, is there a risk? I don't think so. So, so then you created a Linux bond, right? And then, um, and then that that device is then connected to that Linux bond, which is really just a virtual switch uh, with one device connected to it. Um, I don't, I don't, any more risk? I don't think so. Cause then you're just questioning whether or not, you know, whether or not uh, uh, PFSense is a secure product um, and whether or not their, 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 you know, their bridges in general are secure and fine. And I think it's fine. Uh, if anything, it obfuscates your MAC address. Not that, you know, people hide their MAC address, but, you know, MAC spoofing can happen, but uh, uh, it's, it's a whole different type of attack to where they would have to actually be on your network, on your local network to do anything super nefarious uh, to spoof your MAC to do something else. Anyways, long story short, um, if anything, you, you get some obfuscation around what your real MAC address is, right? Because now you're just surfacing to your ISP this virtualized MAC that's fake, and you can change the number or make it dynamic anytime you want. So, uh, But inherently uh, less secure? No, no. Uh, Edie, uh, you're awesome, dude. Love what you're doing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, uh, I know we're a little bit over, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go fast. All right. I've given long answers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give quick answers and anything after that, we'll, 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 uh, I'll follow up in discord for sure. Abdurum, uh, love your K3S and Kate's. I think now that I under, now that I understand Docker, what are some concepts you would advise me to pay close attention to, 
uh, and what are the nuances uh, it has. Thanks so much, Tim. I love your K3S and Kates. I think now I understand Docker. What are some of the concepts you would advise me to pay close attention to? Okay, so so I think now you're going to take on Kubernetes. Um, so going from, from Docker to Kubernetes, there's a couple of challenges you're going to have to solve. With Docker, I'm excluding Swarm, but if you're using Docker, uh, you have one container, Docker networking, uh, kind of makes sense. Um, but at the end of the day, you have a, a one to many or, 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 or one container running on one node. Uh, unless you're using Swarm, I'm totally excluding Swarm because uh, you're not talking about that. And so it's kind of easy to figure out, okay, so in order to do networking, this, 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 this uh, container that's running on this host, I need to expose uh, a node port or, or ports for uh, everyone else to get traffic inside. And that's pretty easy to grasp, you know, hey, this host, I expose uh, some networking and then everyone else just point your IP address or DNS to this, the host's IP on a specific port and I can get to that service. Hey, man, uh, Manolo, Manolo, Prime Sub, thank you so much. Thanks for spending your Prime on me. Thank you so much, appreciate it. So that's easy, that's a easier concept to grasp. Uh, when you go to Kubernetes now, you're gonna have multiple nodes, right? And you're gonna have nodes with different roles. I'm only gonna talk about like worker nodes here. Uh, but now you're going to have multiple nodes that your container could be running on any one of those nodes at any time. And you could have multiple of those containers running at any time. So one of the things you're going to have to, to, to grasp and figure out is, is, is your ingress or your load balancer. How, how are you going to route traffic to that, that uh, container that could be running on any node? Because now you can't, you can't, you can't depend on IP. You can't even depend on node port because it could be running on node one or node two or node three. So figuring out an ingress or getting an ingress configured and running along with a load balancer configured and running is, is probably going to be, uh, it's going to be tough. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but once you get it going, it, it's fantastic. But that's probably something you, you're going to have to dive into. You can use uh, Nginx or you can use uh, uh, traffic for that. Um, and then you're probably going to have to use something like MetalLB. A lot of people are always like, why, why do I need MetalLB? MetalLB is a, like a cloud. It basically simulates a cloud load balancer. Uh, I'm going to go pretty far on this, but I'll do it real quick. But when you configure a deployment um, in Kubernetes, you can say to expose this on a load balancer. And when you do that, um, it basically is telling, hey, load balancer, open up this port for me for me, you know, give me an IP address and expose me to the public internet in the cloud. Super easy at home. That's kind of hard because you don't have a load balancer that speaks Kubernetes that understands like, Hey, you know, it's going to say, give me an IP load balancer and nothing's going to respond. That's where metal LB comes in. Metal LB comes in and says, Hey, I can emulate a cloud load balancer and just put me in Kubernetes. So when I hear these requests, I'm going to give you a public IP out of this pool that I have. And so that's what that does. So you, you want to look into MinLLB. I know I, I'm layering it on. And next and last is, is storage. To storage, same idea. When you go from one to many, it gets tough, right? Single node Docker, you can bind mount all your stuff. You know where your data is. It's on the node that it's running on. When you go to Kubernetes, now you've just scaled out. Now you this node could be here. Or it could be, or, you know, you have multiple nodes. This is getting weird now. Yeah, you, you have multiple nodes uh, and, you know, the pod could be running anywhere. And so you're not going to mount the storage from that node there uh, because when he moves over here, now he can't get to his storage. So storage is another thing you're going to have to figure out. Um, there are some storage classes which can help you. Um, there is... Uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, there is, uh, well, not mentioned earlier, I have a video on it, uh, but you could you could use something like Longhorn, which is a Rancher product, which gives you HA storage within your cluster, kind of complicated, but it will, you can create storage nodes so that all of your pods are guaranteed to have storage inside of your cluster. Or you can use this thing called the NFS Client Provisioner um, that actually allows you to connect to an NFS share. So if you're running TrueNAS, you can connect to an NFS share and all of your all of your, your pods or your deployments can save and read from an NFS share, which is pretty cool. It's pretty awesome because as long as your NF NFS share is up, it can always communicate with that. So again, and, and I use that too in, in TrueNAS and it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's not as true as, well, TrueNAS supports NFS, and then I use the NFS Client Provisioner um, to create a storage class for NFS 
that can connect to my NFS server. And so now all of my pods that are stateful, that, that, that store data within their pod or to some volume can write to my NFS server. Super awesome, super easy to configure. And that too is almost like set and forget it. It's something I don't even think about. It just works. And maybe that's a, that's a testament to TrueNAS, but it's also a testament to uh, the NFS client provisioner because it's rock solid. So anyways, uh, hope that helps. Uh, ping me in Discord if you need to know more. I'm, I'm going to go fast. I apologize. I, <laughs> I'm way over and I don't want to don't want to go longer, too much longer than I said it was. Uh, Rude Core, I'm doing good, Tim. Just wanted to stop and say thank you for getting into my getting into home labbing in June last year. On top of my service, I ended up evolving my rack into chia mining randomly and got super early with one petabyte of storage. It has been a fun project. Keep up the good work. You're doing a great job. Rude Core, thank you so much. Thanks for chatting the first time. Congratulations on, on chia mining and learning all this. One petabyte. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, I have a total of, I think, 40 terabytes, and I'm like, oof. You know, I'm like, I can't imagine having more, but oh, we fill up quick with, with chia farming, can it? Awesome. Congratulations. All right. Looking, uh, going through there. Question about Proxmox issue I recently ran into. Seems I cannot ping Proxmox if no VM is running. As soon as the VM is up, GP GUI ping Proxmox work. Looked at DNS. Um, so GGY, Y, and Y, I'm saying it has something to do with a NIC. Maybe you're passing through a NIC, like a physical NIC that Proxmox is using to one of the guests, uh, that's my best guess, uh, that that you're passing a NIC through. If you're not passing any hardware through, then it's getting really confusing. Uh, the only other thing I think it could be is maybe uh, you don't, I don't know, maybe you have a static IP uh, that's not reserved in DHCP, uh, and uh, when that guest spins up, least likely, less likely than the first thing, it's grabbing the IP that Proxmox has because it's not reserved in DHCP. Those are two things I would check. DHCP reservations or the IPs, make sure they're right. Um, but more so, make sure you're not passing a NIC through that guest VM if you don't have one to pass through. I think Proxmox shouldn't even allow that. I don't think they will, but worth looking into. Uh, let's see. All right. I got, I got, a, all right. Uh, uh, how far down am I? Oh, I, got, I, I? I'm cool. Sorry. I had to do a mental math real quick. Uh, how far is the scroll bar? All right. Good afternoon. This week after fixing... Uh, I'm fixing my backup services, also scanning documents into paperless NG. Nice, because a friend of mine often misses class, and I want to make sure he has the notes for class. You are a good study buddy. That is awesome. I've heard of paperless NG. Haven't tried it out yet. Let me know how it goes. Lord Garden Gnome. I've uh, been following for a while. Watched a ton of your videos, learning new things, ideas for moving into the future. Thanks. Thank you so much. First time chatters. I love it. I love it. I love I love uh, hundredth time chatters too, but they're, this is the first time I've seen so many. Who knows? Maybe uh, uh, Twitch is just surfacing that to me. I don't think so. I think this has been around for a while, but I appreciate it. Uh, Zikusu. Uh, hi, Tim. Huge fan. Uh, made a video on Docker Open Canary over Mac VLAN. Super useful to have in a honeypot. Nice. I hear about this a lot, uh, about spinning up a Docker honeypot to detect that, to see if any of your Docker uh, containers are compromised or doing something they shouldn't be, like Bitcoin mining. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I have to look into it. Awesome. I'll have to check it out. Edie. Also, TrueNAS Scale RC1 has been released. I'm currently playing with it on the spare server. Full release is scheduled for early next year. Awesome. I'm I'm there. When they do it, I'm there. I'll, I'll do it live. Oh, yeah. Now I just, I, bit, I might have bit off more than I could chew. Maybe I'll do it live. Uh, I, th I think I did that with one version of TrueNAS before. I think I did the live upgrade from, I converted from uh, free NAS to true NAS. Uh, I think I did it live too. So maybe I'll do that one live. I'm really putting a lot of trust in that product. More so why I should wait until it's uh, the full release. Good to know. Good to know. I, it's been solid since alpha. I mean, I've heard people using an alpha and they've had like no complaints other than features, you know, I mean, obviously it's alpha. It's not totally done, but you know, early on there were features that were just like placeholders in the UI. Like this is where Docker will live. It's like, okay, it's not there yet. Not done, nor did they promise it, but you know, uh, you know, some things like that. Uh, let's see, PC Geek, uh, I run Alpine in a couple of VMs. One is which TrueNAS Core let me have a couple of Docker containers there. So I have Docker and Alpine, nice. Uh, Nginx Proxy Manager is a single image. You need a, a DB for backend though. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I, I, yeah, it would be interesting to know if they built it on top of Alpine. I hope they did. Uh, cause that's the way to go always, uh, GM robo. Hey, techno Tim, I just wanted to thank you for getting me into a home lab. I now have two Proxmox servers, small two to four, uh, 
two to four core iGPU systems. Nice. And another system on the way. One of them often gets turned off as the heatsink is, is not actually attached to the motherboard, but a clamp uh, uh, to keep it in place. A small fan for cooling. Yeah, I, I've been there. I've been there. I, I built a whole entire machine on top of a laundry basket once. And that's how I ran it over the weekend at my brother's apartment when we were younger. Uh, it, was, it was awesome. Couldn't believe it worked. We didn't touch it or breathe on it, but we could play some NBA live <laughs> uh, for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Gopher Boy, I do. Uh, I even do isolation between my Docker services. Awesome. Isolation is like the first line of defense. I think so, too. Planning comes before you even you even think about exposing things uh, to the public. So, yeah, great tip there. Uh, do you sell parts after a few months after you use them or a few years? Uh, Gamer God, uh, I, I, I sell parts when I don't use them anymore. Uh, and, it, you know, it's it just depends. Like uh, my 710 I used for about a year and a half. It's fantastic. Then I just sold the whole thing. Um, it just depends. I, I don't have any time frame. A lot of my parts, like my PCI cards and PCI Express cards, old video cards, they're in a bin. They're, and I, I rarely sell them for, I, I just don't even think about selling those devices for whatever reason. I probably should, because by the time I want to sell them, they're not worth much. Um, but for the rest, it's just whenever I need. Uh, my Cisco switch, like if you saw in the video, it's just in a one use slot right now, only because it's the best place to store it. I still haven't sold that. I need to sell it. So anyways, uh, no, no rhyme or reason just when I'm done. And then when I remember and have time, like my Cisco switch, haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. Uh, all right. First time chat. All right. Manolo, uh, good evening or whatever. Thank you. Thank you so much. Manolo B is nice. Go for boy. I totally agree. Techno Tim's explanation is good as usual. Flex 420. All right. Thank you so much. Unraid. Yes. No, I have no qualms with one Unraid. It's, it's awesome. Absolutely. So if, uh, Unraid is another fine product, I haven't, I did spin it up once to just play around with it. This is early on, um, ended up going with TrueNAS. Not that they solve the same exact problem. Uh, they solve a lot of the same problems that TrueNet Scale now is 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 solving. But, uh, ooh, man, uh, Unraid is so flexible with storage, though. I, I don't think you'll find that uh, in a lot of products, so for sure. Um, Gopher Boy, central place for backup then. Uh, central place for backup then. Gopher Boy. Uh, Metal will be as nice. Central place for backup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you if you think we're uh, this is on the Kubernetes uh, thread, yeah, absolutely. If you use uh, NFS, uh, the client provisioner, and send them all to the NFS, yeah, centralize all, all that stuff. The only problem is in, then it, it's it's very hard to do HA NFS. I mean, and me personally, it's hard for me. It's probably a hard thing for anyone, uh, maybe, unless you have like real TCP or UDP load balancers and, and do this right. I don't. <laughs> So that's the only thing is is, is when my uh, when my uh, if I ever need to reboot my my TrueNAS server for patching, uh, everything goes haywire. But I I, I you know I, I schedule downtime now. It's like uh, well when that needs to be patched, I reboot everything because that's virtualized, and so I patch everything and reboot everything at the same time. Rarely is TrueNAS getting rebooted without everything else being down. So. Yeah, awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. See. Uh, oh, we're we're to the end. All right. I knew I just hang in there. I uh, I, I was gonna skip over some stuff, but I figured I'll, I'll we'll finish strong. Uh, GM Robo, uh, I do have a question about Proxmox. When I take down the server with the clamp, I need to mention that the servers are in a cluster. Uh, when I need to reboot a VM, if both servers aren't running, the VM refuses to boot. Oh, help with my issue. Storage. Um, Storage. So you're using shared storage across both. And um, if so, is that replicated uh, or is that storage? Like, did you make your storage available on? Uh, so what I would do is look at that VM and look at its virtual hard drive and see where it's stored. It might be over the network or it might be somewhere else or stored somewhere else. Um, but then also, I think if you have, I, I don't know, I don't know, because I, I, I don't do HA VMs. Uh, I do have them in a cluster, but I'm not running HA. Uh, but um, I would look at the storage for that hard drive uh, to make sure, because uh, something sounds weird. Uh, I have run into something similar to that before, but I, I cannot remember what the fix was for it. Um, Oof, I, yeah, drawing a blank. Uh, ping me in Discord, and but I would look at uh, look at that VM, see where that that uh, VM's uh, hard drive is stored. Uh, hopefully, it's on local disk, or if you're using uh, iSCSI, it's on some shared storage somewhere. Something something seems off for sure. That's because of the cluster. All right, you need three nodes running for Quorum, or VMs won't start. Yeah, there you go. That too. Um, 
Yeah. So so if yeah. So if you're running HA, oh, yeah, I see. So so then yeah. So your storage, uh, you have ZFS probably then, and it's just yeah. Your 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 storage is then clustered. I assume. I don't know. I don't have that problem because I don't run HA. I don't run HA, but I can reboot mine at any time. But each one of my nodes has local ZFS storage. That makes sense, except for one. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got to the end. All right, thank you guys. Thank you so much, man. A uh, lot, a of, lot of stuff going on today. I thought today was going to be a pretty chill one. Uh, it was chill, but it was uh, so exciting, so awesome. A lot of first time chatters here today, so I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, we do this every Saturday, usually about an hour. We went a little over today. My Apple Watch is telling me to stand. I've been standing for about two hours. That thing needs some some tweaking. Anyways, we went almost two hours today, so I appreciate you hanging out. Uh, if you could make it to the end, totally fine. If you couldn't, fine too. Um, if you want to talk more, if you want to chat more, uh, you want to connect with people that are here in the channel and some that aren't, uh, join our Discord server. We have a Discord server full of people. It's close to, I think, uh, 45-ish uh, people uh, on the server um, who will love to talk tech, love to, love to talk about a lot of different stuff. It's not all... It's not all tech, uh, but a lot of it is. So if you find you don't have a lot of people to talk tech stuff to, or you only tune into my channel because you want to talk tech, well, we talk a lot of tech in Discord. So 4989. Ooh, we almost hit 5,000 members. Absolutely. That is so awesome. I encourage you to join. There are links there. There are links everywhere. Um, there's links in Twitch. There's links on technotim.live. There's lots of ways to join. There's links on all of my, my YouTube channel, but but no pressure. But it's there and it's open uh, and we welcome you if, if you'd like to. Um, I will be back uh, next week, uh, next Saturday. I'll be back doing the same thing. Uh, probably a little different because every day you guys, every time I stream, you guys have something different to talk about. So that's why I love keeping this open and keeping this channel open for you guys to talk. So I appreciate it. Um, and then I might some, have something out this week. I'm getting caught up on my backlog. Maybe something you talked about uh, <laughs> in the channel today. We'll have to see. So I appreciate it. No, not printers. Oh, we can't talk about printers. That's uh, If you talk about printers or download speed, uh, the conversation never ends. So I, I got to kind of, I got I to curb this now. We've learned. We've learned the hard way. If we talk about printers, everyone will talk about their printer. Either how much they love it or hate it, how much they print. Or even download speed, that's that's a trigger too. People are either love their ISP, hate their ISP, or hate how much they pay. So <laughs> we'll save that for one for next time. Or let's talk about it in Discord. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much. Tons of follows, tons of first-time chatters, tons of subs, tons of gifted subs. Thank you guys all so much. Um, I, I can't say thank you enough. Uh, it's I never would have imagined a year and a half ago when I started that I would have any more than just me and the channel and my bot and Amisha. She was there <laughs> way back. But uh, anyways, I, I can't thank you enough. So I appreciate it. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, ping me in Discord, ping me somewhere, ping me in Twitter, wherever. I'll try to get back to you or leave a comment on the video. That's usually the best way to, to figure out what you're talking about, uh, only because like it, I have context about what you're talking about. And then you rarely have to explain what you're talking about because the context is the video. So comment there or anywhere. So I appreciate it. Anyways, I'm babbling now. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the weather. Um, yeah, take care and be good to each other. Take care, folks.